Okay, so a little bit of a brief what the heck is this. This is a little bit of a new thing. I do coaching on Medify. The link will be in the description if I make this into a video of any kind. And I do 30 minutes or one hour sessions where I go over with people and call uh, just videos and talk about what they could do better and such in their gameplay. So I'm going to do a little smaller series because I want to avail make available a smaller option for those who can't afford Medify sessions because, of course, they are paid. And I want to have a way to, like, make some public coaching ones. So I post it in my uh, Discord. And I was basically like, okay, you guys can submit one game as long as you're okay with me going it going over it and over you guys on stream because I want to stream it. And I'll, I'll pick some. So I picked four. I was supposed to pick three, but I wanted to get two teams and two normal. So if you do want to submit a VOD for the future in case I do this again... There'll be a channel in the Discord. So I think we'll start with uh, Uzi. Because I really like their overlay. I mean, they did a response to Like networking. So we got Team POV here, and I believe this will be his POV in the corner, is how he's going to do it. Um, my stream's not frozen, right? Okay, I think it's working. No. 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 Okay, if that moved. Yes. Okay, cool. It's working. <laughs> Okay. So we have K Dynamo 85 V Shot Bucket Deco. We're against Remix K Pro Try K Shot. Okay, so this Humpback Zone's very special, heavy, very pain heavy map is important to know right off the bat. Some of the main things to kind of explain that are if you look around this corner here, what makes Humpback very special heavy? Partially because high ground is a small area in the middle. So it's very easy for specials to move people away. But another thing is backing up on this map. is It's like one of the hardest maps to retreat on. You can retreat back here, but you can't actually get up. You can only like go around this area. And if you want to go right, you have to jump onto an uninkable, jump again, then swim backward in an area that's still open. So important to know about humpback is mid is very important and retreating is very fucking difficult. <laughs> retreating is a pain in the ass on this map. So typically, some of the main specials we'll see are Missiles and Booyah. And we're seeing a little bit of that here. We have a more of an older meta comp on the other team with the Booyahs from both teams uh, from Double B here. K-Pro instead of Arrow, but still, like, your typical Double Booyah thing. And here we have mostly just Booyah. So comp-wise, what I would recommend, of course, I'm not sure what these players all play. So to give a little bit of specifics, I would recommend a K-Shot here. I think Missiles are very good because Missiles are not only great for moving people and taking space on this map with how clumped it is and hard it is to back up, but the other thing is Missiles deal with the other main special on this map, which is Booyah Bomb, and that's why we've seen a lot less Booyah spam on this map is because of that. And let me grab a way I can see chat because I just realized I won't be able to see Twitch chat if I don't have another device set up. And that way I can clarify things. This is my first time doing this, so this is going to be scuffed. I'm sorry. Okay. So that's just some important map information to get right off the bat. There's a midpoint draft. So team comp It's going to be on second channel. Maybe highlights on the main channel. Uh, we'll see. But this will be second channel for sure. Yeah, so this is... Okay, so this is just a draft cup. I see, I see. But you still want a team-focused review. Okay, okay. How dare you have food? Okay. So I'm looking at individual POV. We're going to be very aggressive. We're clumping three on left side. Zap is going right. Very aggressive opening. We're not going for early special at all. Okay. I... Okay. So, we're taking zone early here. So, what's important to know for openings on zones is there's typically two ways you can do them. You can play very aggressively, try to take mid, try to get a lot of space, and use that to win the fight. Or you can play passively. You can let the other team get in an advantage state in order to use your specials and push in with more of them at once. So, if you play more back and you farm your specials, you can just sort of counter push and have a lot more momentum. And... In zones, the defending team, like the team who is losing and does not have control of the zone, gains a bit of special charge. So that's mainly what can help with that. 
So what I'm seeing is two different styles of play. Like this, this team is trying to be very aggressive. They're trying to take mid right away in the first 10 seconds. The other team is playing more passive. The heavy already has a Booyah. The shot's about to get missile. Like, very defensive setup. The shot's not really ready to help mid. These two are trying to fight, but more trying to hold, and the heavy's playing to get outside. So two different openings. We enjoy staying in one spot horizontally. Oh my god. Okay. So Buya clears on this side here, and then we're pushed back. So we're playing with Keisha on this side. We have Zap Bucket over here. Okay. Oh my god. The wall ate my shot. I am so mad right now. That try is so weak. Okay, so that pick could have happened, but remember what I mentioned with Humpback earlier on how you get set up? Retreating on this map is very hard. That's important to note. So what I wanted to look for in your opening is if you were going to play this position here or drop into mid. Now, if you're going to take mid with your team here, if you want to push up and hump back and you don't want to play far back because you're like a more defensive slow up and you're really vulnerable to specials, you guys would need to get more space. Like you would need to push up enough. So if they special you, you can go back here and not lose everything. Like, ideally, if you back up, you want the dynamo to be either over here or you want to go all the way back over here. That's two good positions to play. This left side just gets you cornered, especially because their heavy also goes here. So if you get stuck in this corner, you can't do anything and you're going to die. That's basically how it goes. So if we're dropping in a mid, we need to try to take as much space as possible. And if they are going to force with Booyah, we need to be more retreating diagonally, trying to go toward this corner because that's a better position for you to play. If I were to play this aggressive position and we get this space here, I would then push up for mid. I like, I would go further, flick ahead of them, like sit in mid. Not too far, you still use the second wall as cover, but I would go I ahead know. here in mid, flick, push these guys back. If the try has to back up a bit and then your zap and bucket can watch the pro, like your zap and bucket play closer over here, then when they special, it's a lot harder for it to follow up. Because if these guys are pushed further back and the pros push further back, they have to take time getting into mid. But because we're already backed up here because we didn't take enough space, they now have all the important positions on the map. The pro can crossfire this angle. Nobody's playing either defensive position, so there's no crossfire from the bucket or the dynamo to try to help out. Everyone's stuck without much paint, and in humpback, there's nowhere to go. So that's why I went wrong in that fight. Also, Macross756, thank you for the two gifted subs to Scuffed Raider and Izaganje. Thank you so much. God, I am so mad. Yes, this is the first one. Okay, so they retake, Bucket setting up defensively. So this comp is weird. If we are playing it, we're playing more off of like ballering and splash down to Kappa Zone, or we're playing off of the Burst Bomb Dynamo Flick for chip damage. You do have some good comp synergy here, even if you don't have a lot of bombs like necessarily you have a burst bomb and you have a suction bomb but that's it you have two sprinklers which isn't that great and the other problem is you have a bit low special output with the bucket deco and you don't have as relevant specials with a baller and a splashdown so if you guys are playing off this you have to play off of chip damage here like the dynamo can hit like 40 something damage at a distance or reliable 50 if they're close enough with either flick your bucket can combo off of either the burst bomb or the suction bomb you guys still do have a good bit of paint and a good bit of chip damage so pairing together is really important here Okay, important positioning wise, I know this isn't you, but this is a team review, so I'm going to say it for everyone. If you're playing a Slayer and they know where you are, there is no point sharking here, like whatsoever. This is effectively doing nothing. Like the idea of sharking is to get an opening because they don't know where you are. But if they already know where you are, you might as well be painting. Like, you might as well throw a sprinkler. You might as well swim around so they think you might have moved. Like, do something to put a little bit more pressure. Because right now, they're said, okay, the bucket's here. We're going to throw the bombs to the bucket. The bucket's hiding there. He's going to push up with his baller that we can see on the top of the screen. It's very predictable, very easy to tell what he's going to do. If people know where you are, you lose a ton of threat potential. For a Slayer type open like that. Do you pick this pro? That is a nice vertical flick kill. Look at that in the corner here. That is like perfect range. Like peek through the wall. Look at that. 
That's a clean kill. I'll, I'll give you that one. That was a good one. Okay. Anyway, armor. So we're trying to push armor here. So here's another bit of the problem with the comp. So we armor. What do we coordinate with it? Like maybe this drop splashdown. That's going to be very predictable. Baller isn't really going to coordinate with it. Bui isn't going to coordinate it with it. Honestly, if you are going to run something like this, I would say it'd be even better to just have missile because two of your specials don't really have a lot of synergy with it. Oh, boy. It's so like armor, not too much happens. Oh boy, I love abusing dynamo effect. Okay, I get you're happy about the kill, but like, don't talk about him voice. Like, this this is gonna be something that I see a lot. Oh boy, I love abusing dynamo effect on this map. But like, don't don't talk about it until after the game, because you take up team comms. And right now, what's important to be called out is, oh shit, a try got behind us. We fucked up. Let's take care of that. Like, the call should be you noticing the try, or them noticing the try, and you guys focusing on it. That is, like, imperative right now. You have so little time to deal with this try, because he got behind you, you guys already messed up. So, like, the calls need to immediately focus on the team fight at hand. If you're gonna say it mid-game, wait until at least the fight is over. Okay, there has been a try behind you guys for like 10 seconds. And I have heard nothing about him. Like, look at where he's sitting right now. Where the fuck is he gonna go? If he goes right, there's a baller. If he goes left, there's a shot and a booyah bomb to cut him off. And if he goes forward, there's a dynamo. This try should be absolutely fucked over and killed. There is no reason he's surviving as long as he has and walking around. And the reason it's happening is because nobody's talking about it. So, like, if you see someone that overextended or has that little options, make the call. It's harder for, like, your bucket and shot to notice because they're very focused on fighting. Like, your bucket's trying to baller around. Okay, actually, your bucket does notice, but, like, your shot is not focused on the try right now. And you're not even that. Well, you're kind of focused on it, but not as... No, you're not focused on the try. I don't know. You lost sight of him. I thought you saw him earlier. Okay. Anyway, you guys basically lose the try. This is a free kill. This is a nice opening. This stagger is another armor player. This was missed. Calls need to happen on that. And, like, focused calls. Not just the tries behind us. Like, dude, what the fuck is this try doing? Go shoot him. Or, like, turn around. There's a try behind you. There's a try on our bottom left. Let's pin him. Like, something. Make it clear that this try is a free kill for three people on your team, and then get that kill. Oh, left side, left side. There's the call. It happens that late. And then the try gets more value. Okay, paint priority right here. This is a note for both you and the end zap here. You guys both go, and you start painting behind you. They're coming from spawn. This is important to get, but not where you get first. I want you painting up here first, and I want your zap painting up here first. You can go and paint behind this later. Right now, they're all from spawn. You can paint that uncontested. You want to paint further up. Painting further up is fine. You can go back to areas that are further back later. That'll better your special faster, and it'll build it safer. Okay, so you're playing Dynamo in this game, so there's a few rules you have to abide by that are specific to you, and one is if they, like, keep fucking track of Missile and Booyah at all times. You need to know when they're gonna have those specials. Like, not just when they have it ready, because it sometimes a Missile weapon will get it, pop it immediately, and you'll barely see it that they have Missile ready, because it'll go away from the top of the screen. You need to track, like, is this K-Shot farming Missile? Is this Heavy getting Booyah? And then when they pop it, can they throw it at me? Because you are a prime target for both of these specials. If they can use them just to kill you, they will. So whenever they do that, whenever they have those specials ready, you do not go for anything like this. You are making sure you have paint around you. You are avoiding vertical flicks, sticking with horizontal. You made sure you have paint on your fleet. Have enough ink for a sprinkler if you can, etc. Anything you can do... To be ready to move. Because you'll be a target for these specials 99% of the time.
It's like in this case we went too far forward and we didn't think about that. The second thing though is your team is super split up here. Like your zap is way over here, your zap's in mid, your bucket's on the right. It's good not to be clumped up, but literally no one here can help each other. Like the most that can happen is corn throws a suction over here and then has to spend like three seconds to run. Your bucket can't even do that. Your bucket just has to swim all the way over before he can even help someone because he doesn't have a bomb. So it's like, if someone gets dived here, they're just kind of fucked. Well, they got me. Yeah, someone's on left. Okay, you guys see what I said earlier about retreating on humpback and how it's fucking dumb here? Look at this. This is a problem, immediately. So, I know it's tempting to not lose ground on humpback. Because, like, this is a very, like, people getting here is scary. If you're in a position where their whole team's alive and the only place you are is in this low ground area, you're probably fucked and should jump out. Like, you might get away with it at lower levels because people might not capitalize on it as fast, but you guys are in a shit position here. They can bomb behind you. You cannot back up. You have nowhere to go. If they capitalize and try to, like, bomb to cut you off, like if they pro and shot throw a Bia and then they try to shoot you guys, like, you're just fucked. And then, not only that, this is after the fight's already lost. So your armor is going to be mega staggered if this happens. It's going to take way longer to regroup, and it's going to be way easier for them to get more specials. It's like, I would not even try to fight this. I would see this, and I'd be like, shit, that sucks. Back to spawn. Okay. So you poking people on this right side is good. Poking the heavy, getting poke damage when you can safely. That That's good. You're playing to pick over the walls and stuff. But, like, what's the priority here? Like, what are we painting for? Your vertical flicks are like charger. They can get people to sneak in or you can clear an area. What are you trying to clear? Because right now you're just kind of poking people who you aren't going to be able to kill. I would prefer, like, look at this bottom corner. I would prefer this get painted, especially since their try has already tried to fucking run in through here. I would make sure this area is painted so your zap or your bucket could drop down here and put more pressure. So I would paint this area more. I would paint this left side. I would spend less vertical flicks and I'd be more painting. Like, Dynamo's a support. It's important to tick damage people when you're fighting, but you're very rarely going to kill people on your own because, unfortunately, Dynamo vertical flick ain't that great. If they're close enough to where you can kill them with two verticals, then you may go for it. Or if you're going to poke someone that's important to back up, then you can do it safely. But here, the priority needs to be painting and getting control for your team. Because you want your team to get down here. So when you be in the zone, they're already here to move in. Not back here, has to go here, has to go here. You want to be as close as possible to capitalize off those specials and waste as little time as possible moving in. That being said, you can also use them to contest zone is good. Vertical flicking to contest zone is very good. Like any, that's a, that's like the main thing that I've used Dynamo vertical flick, especially on two zone maps, is to just stall zone is really useful when you're regrouping. That, that just buys you more time. That's always good. Okay, this is almost perfect. So you, you booya, they booya. And then they missile. So you fuck off with the Buya, And now, if you guys played it like a tiny bit better, you guys would have a huge advantage. Because look at their specials. The only thing they're going to have soon is an armor. And even then, that's a try. They might not get it super fast. They don't have a Buya, They don't have a missile. They don't have anything. You've waited out their specials. Meanwhile, you have armor, baller, splashdown. You have some more specials than them. So waiting out their specials here is the good call. Okay, your baller got lucky here, because if their team, again, if their team was better here, the play is to just fuck up this baller. There's literally four people surrounding this baller. A singular suction and it is fucked. A splat bomb and a heavy shot and it's fucked. Three people shooting at it and it's fucked. There are so many ways in which this baller dies. So the priority here, since we're balling in way ahead of our team, you need to stall. It's good to take attention because it'll make it easier for stuff like your uh, shot and your zap to get in. Speaking of which, your shot needs to get down here too at some point. 
But, like, I would not go this far deep. This is just asking to feed before your team comes back. Let, like, stall around, play safer. Like, roll down here. Like, keep the bucket and pro's attention, but don't let these two fuck up your baller. They really don't like me. Okay. Anyway, you do stay alive, though, so this works. Because now you have a huge special advantage. Three people pushing together on this side, or two people, and then your dynamo shot pairing. Awesome. Burst bombing with the vertical flick. Cornflower plays well, pairs with the bucket. We can pick. Nice. Where's Heavy? Heavy's bottom left. I like to focus on the heavy there. Good. Okay, your shot gets a little greedy. That's really just respawn thing. Like, if they're already back, you have to, like, keep track of, like, okay, they're they're back from spawn already. Their icon's on top. I can't risk pushing this as much, especially with something like a try that will willingly dive that. Poking the dynamo here, poking the heavy there is good, though. Poking him in a corner. But you guys do still have to be careful, because, like, you won the fight. You got mid control. But you're still players down. So, like, at some point, the heavy is safe. We're painting this left side. We're trying to regroup. Like, maybe we lose zone, but your goal is to just hold some amount of control and get your players back. Okay. What went wrong here? That was a very good booyah from their heavy. That was, like, the perfect place to throw that booyah there. Because he's cutting off exactly where you want to go. That's really smart. Like, that forces you into a really shit position. So there's a few options here. For you, I'm focusing your POV right now. You could just booyah to try to tank their booyah and throw yours. That'll maintain the position. You can use it to paint your feet. You can throw it ahead of you. That could potentially work better. Because Booyah is actually pretty tanky against other Booyahs. Unless if there's other people who are able to immediately shred you. But if it's just the Booyah, you can tank it with your own. And then throw yours to keep people off you. It'll paint your feet and you can back off, sprinkle, or throw. Get a fast retreat. That can work out well. The other thing is if you're over here, this is just kind of a fucked situation. You should get out of there. Like, forget the Booyah. Even if you booyah, even if you live here, the booyah goes off, you live, and you get out. Somehow, by some magic, that's still just a waste of a special. Your team's not here to capitalize it. They're all on from spawn. So it's like, even if some miracle, the booyah does something, or you live, the booyah is still a waste. So realistically, this is another one where it's like, just jump out and regroup. It's not as big a deal with K-Dynamo, because K-Dynamo can get Booyah very fast, but it's still a bit of a waste. All right, shredded. All right, don't, don't drop, don't drop. I have a slot down. Still. I'm just going to wait for the Booyah to start the sprinkler is kind of a waste. You should just be painting here. And I would even say some of the vertical flicks here are like horizontal or like once you've cleared this area, just focus on paint with horizontal flicks. Like horizontal paint so much better. I'm just gonna wait for the this is just wasting your ink tank. Good flick there though. But it's like your priority here is get Booyah and get paint. That's your two priorities right now. If you get a kill, that's a bonus, but that's a mistake on their end. That's not your priority. Your job right here is to get pain control and to get this right side of the map. That's your job right now. It's so like you flick under this ledge to check for Sharker. That's good. This is painted. You paint that. Now we drop. And then we kind of sprinkler... Poking like... The priority here is paint. Second problem... Oh, your bucket gets... Wow, Splashdown is fucking Jesus, that special dude. Look at that. The missiles just screw it. That's kind of unlucky. So these two kind of get stuck. Your shot kind of gets stuck in retreat. Hell, should have played back here, like, to back off. This heavy is very good with his booyahs, by the way. Like, it's something to note, because it's important for your own booyah use. Look how every time this heavy uses booyah, 
Like, he uses it to cut off a root. He's not throwing it at the splatter shot. He's throwing it so when it expands, where the fuck does he go? If he stays in this corner, he's dead. He can't stay there. And he has to walk toward the Booyah to get out. That's exactly how you want to poke with Booyah if you're coordinating with people. That's exactly how you should do it. So your bucket's on a flank, but I've heard very little plays off it. Because if you're playing off this and you're going to, like, bucket flank, that can work. Because that gives you an extra angle here. Like, you can pincer from here, here, and here now. But I'm not hearing any calls or focus that this is the play. Like, it feels like there's two people doing their own thing here, you're doing your own thing here, and the bucket's doing their own thing. I don't- I cannot tell what the team goal here. This is just three solo queue plans. Okay, and again, same thing for the bucket. They know where you are, don't just sit still. Like, even paint around this area for yourself. Like, paint, so if someone goes for you, you have room to move, or if you get shot at, like, do something to help yourself out. Like, again, same thing. Hiding here. Why? They know you're here. They're just gonna tell their shot. Like, he, he knows. So, like, instead of just sitting here, paint this whole thing. So that way, one second. Sorry about that. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is like, if they know where you are, there is no point in hiding. Like paint this up. Cause if what you can do, if you paint this and this whole area is now green, All right. uh, right. and then the shot tries to push you, like, how much harder would it be the, for the shot to run at you if this was all green? Way harder. You could you could move everywhere. But because you don't, you have nowhere to go. Like, you swim, but you just painted there, and you're kind of stuck. And you have to baller. Don't only... Do not shark if people know where you are. Just paint around. I know it can sound counterintuitive, like your goal is to focus on the kills, but the paint will help you get kills. Did I unmute myself, or did I forget? I did not forget. Okay, I'm sorry. Paranoia. Okay, that being said, the baller still gets away. Gets with primary objective, which is pin and mid, which is good. Make sure we heal from burst bomb before we poke. That's essentially what goes wrong this fight. It's really simple, but you just, you're weak. You get hit by burst bomb and retain being weak. Take a bit more damage. And then you peek and you get killed because you're low. It's a bit of panic, but you still have enough time to get a booyah off. You have to keep that in mind. It's like, heal, paint safely, get that flick off. And then we're just gonna get pinned here. Okay, so, main takeaways from this game. Three points that I'm gonna give you. Number one, exclusive to humpback. Or not exclusive, but, like, especially important for humpback. Retreating on this map is absolutely fucking bullshit. There is nowhere to back up. There is no sponge. You have to jump across uninkables and peek people to back out. That's why this map is special heavy. Stuff like missiles and booyah is very important. I would encourage this comp to have a missile in humpback. It, it's so good on this stage, please. Uh, for you, your vertical flicks are good, and you're using them safely and poking the right people. But sometimes it's just not your job. You're playing for tick damage a lot, which is good when it's needed, but sometimes you need to play for paint and securing the right areas of the map. Like, you need to focus on getting your teammates in. Like, paint where they want to go, clear that space, and be ready to help them then. But if you can't clear for your teammates to get in, there's no one to play off of that tick damage. The further in front a burst bomb weapon is, or a rapid or something, the easier it is for people to combo off that vertical flick. If they don't have room to move in to begin with, they're not going to be able to do as much with it. For your team, there needs to be more communication. Or I guess for, like, all the players here. Like, there was a try behind you guys earlier in this game, and nobody cared. And if one person called it out, you three would have killed him. One person out of the three. If we're pushing up with the baller for Bucket Deco, or just in general, if they know where you are, don't shark. Just paint. It's perfectly fine to, like... 
Paying around, even if you're trying to play for kills. This is a pickup, so do you still need to communicate? Yes. 100%. Pickup communication is worse, but pickups still need to communicate. This is why communication skills are important. Because if you're thrown in with random people, the better people's communication and teamwork skills are, the easier it'll be to work with people you haven't played with. And people's communication skills in lower levels needs a lot of work, from what I've noticed in my Medify sessions. I have not had a single team I've coached that have not had a decent amount of communication options. It is very common. It doesn't matter who you're playing with. If you can shot call, if you can help people know what to focus on, etc., it will matter. The more coordinated you can be with people, the better. Like, look at high-level JP solo, and you will notice people still coordinating or signaling with this way more than some actual pickups will. It's incredibly, incredibly important. All right, Uzi, thank you for the VOD. Let's do solo queue next. That ended up being a long-ass VOD. How long have I been? Jesus, that was like a 30-minute... Dude, I almost... That was basically a 10-minute VOD review. Not exactly, but like, damn. Or maybe it was closer to 25. Okay. Okay, this is loud. So this is from Orange Toad. I believe they are K-Shot. And this is a solo key match. Okay. Wait, does he show his gear? I think he does, actually. No, he doesn't. Okay. Well, I'll check his gear at the end. We'll do gear last. Do you still have Medify open? It will be open in around three weeks. I'm doing stuff, and then I will have time to do coaching again. So it will be open by then. Okay. Okay, this opening is not efficient, like, right off the bat. What are we doing here? So we're getting to mid late, and usually if you're getting to mid late, it's because you're trying to get an opening special, but we are doing neither of those things. We are getting to mid slow, and we're not getting a special, so this is already a very inefficient opening. Like, you want to get into mid to try to bomb and apply pressure on your stack first, or to try to push in if you get a pick, or paint mid up for your special. If you're staying back, you're getting missiles to push in with. You're trying to do both, and it doesn't work. You have to pick one. Have a basic opening plan. Secondly, map, start of the game, map, every time. If you're grinding solo queue, the first five seconds should be spent with you keeping a close eye on your mini-map. Because you don't know where the fuck people are. Your mini-map can tell you if there's someone farming special in spawn, where people are going, what gear they're wearing, if there's stuff like ninja squid, stealth jump, drop roller, MQ damage up, all stuff you want to know. There's so much information that you need to be taking in at the start of the game, and you're not taking it. Okay, this is the same thing. I'm guessing this is bomb poking, but this is the same thing as the last game. We are sharking when people know where we are. Just poke bombs or paint. Like, paint this area here. Shoot this, and then throw a bomb. And then recover. Or, like, throw a bomb, then shoot this, then recover your inks. So you skip the suction bomb lighting frames. That's the second thing for shooters. If you throw suction, paint for a little bit, and then recover your ink. Because, unless if you're, like, purely bomb spamming to defend a lead or something. Because right here, you're sitting in your ink doing nothing, because they're lighting frames. You can shoot, and then go in your ink, and then recover it. That's what you want to do. So throw suction, then paint, then recover ink. Less downtime, more paint output. Okay, good pick with the bomb. Nice shots there. Miss links to the right doesn't pick people. Okay. So touching tower is good here for the special advantage. And it looks safe, but I'm also seeing like a free pick there. Okay, your team gets it. Okay, you play this passive. Okay, okay. I assumed you were going to chase the swings, but you don't. This is good here. I'm going to turn this down because it might be a little loud. 
But yeah, I guess it's important note for TC. Tower control special advantage is broken. It's stupid. Basically, the way it works, if you're losing on tower control, you get 2.25 points for special per second. But if you're pushing the tower, regardless of the score, or not even pushing, if your team's in control of it, like if it's, if it's not going back to mid... You're gaining special charge. 4.5 points for special per second. Simply touching the tower every 5 seconds. Like, let's think here. 4.5 points for special per second. Tower usually takes about 5 seconds before it goes back. That's what? 18 special points per player every 5 seconds. 18 per player. 4 players. That is a massive amount of special charge. That is why I always hamper on people who do not understand tower control. Because I get people who are like, oh, we gotta force it. No, tower special advantage is dumb. Playing off of that is very smart. The amount of special charge you get just by touching the tower every five seconds is ridiculous. If you're in solo, play off that. Okay, I can respect playing safe with the bomb. What is this suction? Okay, if we're suction poking, poke top of this ledge. You want to poke the mid-range. You, if someone drops here, you can shoot them. You want to poke bombs up here, or you're throwing them back here because you notice there's a flanker, hopefully. Nice, there we go. Okay, we can check. Okay. This works, but there's some things that I don't like here. This is a risky bit to take. Pre-fire here is good, but I would not be jumping around. I would be shooting and staying on the ground so you can swim backward. If the try gets a little bit closer, you're dead here. If you're on the ground, he gets closer, you can strafe backward slightly and stay alive. Like, maybe you don't get the bubble, but it, the double, but it's better for you to stay alive here. You can move much faster as a shooter by being grounded, and your shots are more reliable. Be very careful when you jump as a shooter. Okay, we're capitalizing off our missiles. How long has missiles popped? Okay. This missile is too fast. I know, like, sitting in missiles is downtime, but, like, this is too fast. Scan a little bit, pick your targets. Because this flings it does not matter. The missiles and the flings it did not do anything. You're gonna get some missiles like this where you have to be fast. Like, if there's a fight going on and you popped missiles, you want to use them quickly so you can go help people. Like, wasn't needed here. Okay, clean the try, which is good. We're maintaining mid. Only flings again. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay, I can't tell what your thoughts were, but just to be clear, mindset here, if there's one person alive, where the fuck is the flingza? Is on my mind here. Like, I'm being very ready to move the second I see him, because he's probably hiding if we haven't seen him for a while. So you notice that, which is good. Okay, don't force tower. This kind of situation where it's like 2v2, don't force tower. You just want to stay alive and hold mid. Again, you get the special charge. But B, especially in solo, people will be desperate to stop a tower push. You will catch people overextending to kill the objective all the time. You can back off tower... Bait someone forward, just shark them out and kill them, or just pre-fire them or something like that. You don't have to force the tower to go this far. Like, just get off it. It will stay there. It will not go that far. You will you will be okay. It's like your goal your goal here is regroup, pick a target, and kill them. I would also just straight up push this guy. Because he has, he has no one near him, and you have a ton of pain control. This is someone you can push by yourself. You don't need the special here. If you want to use it and push, that's fine, but, like, we're giving him a lot of time and space. Like, you respected him way too much. You have pain control all around him. You have high ground. He has nowhere to go. He has no teammates near him. That's a kill. You can get that. Okay, 
Same thing. Don't worry about the tower so much. Just get off it if it's pressured. It's fine. Like, you're, t you're not ready to move tower through here. It's not going to go very far if people aren't set up. Your focus is maintaining mid control, getting specials, looking for a pick when you can. That's your goal here. Okay, we're going back to mid. We're touching tower. Nice. Your baller cucks you from the tower. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Good job here, by the way. Like, you could have gotten this kill... But, like, you didn't get it. There's one above you. You recognized it. You backed off. That's really good. Like, you are not tunneling on this kill. Like, a lot of players will get very focused on what they're doing, and they'll lose, like, a lot of track of their options. It's very easy to just only focus on what you're doing rather than, like, other thing options that you have available. So this is good. Like, backing off here, being aware of it, and doing it that fast. That's really, really good. Good bomb. Nice help in your team. Yeah, and then look at that. Your Flingza cleans the jet because they're focused on you. That guy doesn't jump out. You get help from a teammate. And it becomes so much easier. Because you're not trying to win a 1v1. You're just playing the 2v1. That's good. Nice kill there. Nice bomb. We're doing objective. Nice pick on the try. Okay, this left side isn't really as necessary. If the tower gets to third check, there's not really too much merit of being here. This position is not that strong. Like, even if someone drops here, they have to run all the way over to the tower and push, like, stack. Like, you can just play your right stack, still bomb for the tower, missile, and react to this guy if he gets near to the tower. Being over here is just a little bit too far to one corner. You're not going to do much from here unless if someone literally feeds you a kill. And even then, they can feed you a kill later on, and you will get the same kill. So, like, it would have been much better for you to be in a position to paint and suction for your team here. Because you kind of leave them alone. I like this. We're playing under the ledge. We're poking bombs. This is good. We're maintaining. Your teammate's kind of feeding, but that's okay. Nice pick from the bomb. Nice noticing the tower speed. Nice, it's going well. Okay, good fight. We're playing it slow, which is good because you have all the pain control in the world right now. Yeah, okay. Do not be super eager to fight a try on this map. If you're going to fight a slosher, you never want to give them high ground. Like, whoop! <laughs> oh my, like, it happens right here. Like, I have the good position. Now they have the good position. Oh, shit! <laughs> and then it all goes wrong. Don't, don't give them, do not give a bucket high ground like that. If you're going to back off, back off the other way, but do not give them your position. You absolutely could have just walked backward and pre-fired this ledge and this bucket was fucked. Don't, don't give them the position here. So it's like, I think you, I think you just got really greedy for the kill and you just didn't space properly. Okay, we're still poking bombs and painting up. Okay, we're going to help our flings up, which is good, but we're still playing it safe. Okay, we're opting to back out. Flings is doing good. We get a missile off. I'm 
Sure, that's fine. He's dead, so. Alright, that was a very clean game. <laughs> yeah, so this was obviously a game you performed very well in. I think your team was very good. This was played well. Other than the try moment there, there were some times where you could have painted better, but I didn't have too much to say for this one. Uh, gear is... Honestly, this is probably fine. I would opt for a little bit more charge up, like just a little bit, because I think this is a little bit selfish with the swim speed, but even then this is not a bad set. Like you can absolutely run this and they'll be fine. Uh, if you can, if you submit VODs for coaching, like if you ever do a Medify session with me or anyone else, or if you just submit another one for these again, try to submit one where you get a hard lobby. Like this is one where you killed it. And I'm pretty sure you fucking know it because you literally take a picture of it. So like, it's cool. You did good. You played very smart. I am proud. However, you want to send matches where things don't go well, where you fight people who are a bit better than you, if you can. Because I think a lobby of you going against like a 2400 lobby would have had way more things for me to tell you. Because here there just wasn't a lot that could have gone wrong. Like you played smart in mid, the other team constantly ran in. You didn't feed except for that one time on the try slasher. You played smart with your positioning. Like there were some minor mistakes, but there wasn't anything major to point out here. So it's like, you want the stuff that doesn't go perfectly for you. All right, I'm going to get the fan, and then we will do uh, this team. Okay. I'm back. All right. So, Team Rain. Her calls aren't exactly great. He's probably... By the way, I know this... I, I checked out, like, I skimmed through the first 10 minutes, like, one minute of each of these videos I picked to see what they were like. I like these little uh, calm overlay things. I think they're a little big, but, like, I like this. This is very cool. If you're, like, editing it to make it easier to tell who's talking, like, that's a very nice quality of life for me, and I very much appreciate it. Good effort. Also, hello, coach. In the future. Okay. This is a very interesting Albacore comp. Yo, uh, I don't have any major opinions on it, but just as a heads up, I'm doing coaching sessions right now, so I'm not going to be taking, like, random questions uh, at this time. I'm going to be focusing on the people who submitted me VODs, just as a heads up. Uh, anyway, okay. So, this comp is interesting to me in a few ways. Uh, one, it's very short range. Albacore is a very long range map, and the longest range you're running on an, is an L3. That is a risky thing. Even more risky, you're running double pack on a map with greats and long range. And a stamp. This is a very non-Albacore comp. I'm not sure if this is like... Maybe you're someone who, like, this is your normal comp and you just haven't adapted it for the stage, but this comp is going to fucking struggle here. Like, this is a hard comp here. It's a bit better because it's Rainmaker, but, like, this is not a good comp here. I'm going to be completely honest. At the very least, if you want to keep the same main weapons, get a K-Shot. At least have missiles to move the backline and help your pack out. It will do wonders. I don't hear anyone checking map, and I don't know what the plan is. Are we getting pop? Are we not getting pop? What are we doing? One's coming up, uh, behind. I see two. What's the opening plan? Okay, Rainmaker opening plans are fucking essential because there is two outcomes for every stage except Snapper, because Snapper, it doesn't matter. Which is either we are getting pop and taking mid control in the special advantage, or we are setting up and they're getting pop. If you have not picked either of those, then it means you are going to waste time shooting into the Rainmaker shield for potentially nothing but wasting your time. Like, what is this going to do if you don't win the pop? Nothing. 
Rush is on the right side. Your L3 is fighting, someone else is on the right, you're going for the pop. Their team can't even tell if they want to get pop or not. They can't figure it out either. So like, start of the game here, we see these comps, I want to hear if we're going for pop or not, and then we get the pop first. Either we're going for it or we're not, but let's pick. Uh, behind. The brush is on the right side. Yep. Because there's immediate discoordination here, and the game has just started. How did the, the curtain rollers, curtain got rollers, got rollers got oh, okay, well. How did the, the curtain rollers, got, curtain rollers, got, rollers got, the carbon rollers top comp call comes out late because where there's confusion and complaining. Just call where the carbon is. Okay, well. Uh, Same thing here. You die to the carbon. Call it out. Keep the comments for later. After the game. Um, I died. Watch out for brush behind. Deco's, I'm Deco's uh, oh. pushing. Like, there we go. We finally made a call. Don't flood team voice with comms that are not relevant. Like, it just gets in the way of actual callouts. It's not necessary. Like, people will do it sometimes. I will complain about some bullshit lag, but I will keep it to a minimum and as unoften as I can. What up, mid? I got the Rainmaker with a bomb. Cool. That E leader loves the charm. Uh, I got watch. somebody with a bomb. Never mind. Wait. I got the Rainmaker. E leader. Okay, what's the defensive plan? How'd the rain get all the way over there? I got the Rainmaker with a bomb. Okay, so you're dropping in to Narnia, uh, or not Narnia, you're dropping just into Hell, more specifically, because everyone's here. Their range is running, there is a Junior on the right who's dropping down, the Brush is here, where is your other player? They're going up mid. I got the Rainmaker with a bomb. I'm not sure. That e leader loves the charm. I got somebody. Okay. Okay, oh, he died. Okay, okay. So where are we setting up here? Okay, so your L3 gets staggered. That, okay. So where are we setting up? Like, you being up here is fine. Like, that. that's good. You can pre-fire. I wouldn't drop down here. I would just shoot him. But also, like, someone should be up here. Your junior is dropped down as well. Your brush is now dropping. And so their team's like, bye. Oh shit, no one's up here. A singular player up here kills this entire push like a good 30 points sooner. But everyone's down here. So that that just goes wrong. I'm sorry, excuse me. I was behind a wall when I died. Okay, I don't see the point of grabbing rain here. Like everyone pretty much died except the leader. It's better to let it reset because if you're grabbing it they're getting special advantage. You have someone holding the objective instead of inkjetting mid because you have inkjet. There's no pop to give you map control in middle. There's a ton of disadvantages to it. I was behind a wall when I died. They are talking. Maybe it's too quiet for you guys. I'll turn up their comms. Oh, God. Uh, is that roll the right oh. side? Got him. Okay, we picked the brawler. Uh, you got me. Oh shit. That E leader is causing me the troubles. Okay. The match has started. We are peaking E leader way too much. Like, especially on a map like this, you guys have to play close to cover. Causing me the troubles. Like, think if we're navigating past here and there is an E leader in mid. Where are we gonna go? Like, running through here won't work. Let's go somewhere that has cover. Same for your junior. Like, popping rain. Look um, how close they are in the open. Like, we can't be peeking corners. Yeah, that's okay. Like, I'm gonna be harsh, but that's because, like, the more things I give you, the more you have to work on. So that's fine. Like, if I'm gonna give you a lot of notes and if there's, like, communication needs to work, like, don't take it to, like, heart as, like, Damn, we suck. That's not the takeaway here. Like, the takeaway is, okay, shit. This is something we can work on. Let's start working on it, because we can absolutely fix it. They're probably popping. Yep, let them pop. Good pop. Right. Yeah. Got the Got the traded with the brush. Oh. Okay, this is the perfect example of why comms are important, okay? I'm gonna play this clip again, okay? 
Follow coming up right. Yeah. Got the got the traded with the brush. Oh my Okay. Follow coming up right. Now yes! The junior could have probably noticed the baller right next to him. Definitely something to work on. But also, if I am you right now, and I am seeing this guy near me, hey, help me with this baller. Hey, there's a guy here. Come shoot him. Like, not just, what do you say? Like, there's a baller here? Baller coming up right. Like, just chill voice. Yeah, man, there's a baller on the right side. Not, not really expecting us to do anything about it, but like, there's a baller here, by the way. Yeah. I'll be going, hey, oh man, look at this fucking baller. He's rolling in way too far. Throw a bomb behind him. Cut this guy off. We're like, hey, right, okay, realistic, serious call out. Baller pushing far right. Let's focus him. Or like, Keen, help me right here. Or Keen, next to you. So your junior provides zero help here. Oh, I can't aim. Until then. That takes way too long. And then, you also have this guy who could help you. He says, fuck you guys, not my problem. I'm getting the Rainmaker. Oh All of this is communication. Like, yes, awareness could be better, but communication could also be better here. Can't aim. Also... If you're defending on rain, do not just grab the rainmaker every time. Let it reset. Whenever you grab that objective, you are giving your opponent special charge and free recon on one of your players. That has to move or they explode in 60 seconds. It is not worth it. It just makes pushing it harder, and it's just going to get you guys on defense over and over and over again because you're constantly giving the other team an advantage. Just let it go back. Pop the shield. Let it reset and just focus on it. I have to stall them. Oh. Yeah, they made the mistake in the recording. They acknowledged it. It's not a big deal. Like, it's not that bad. I'm gonna try poking sniper with a. They just probably had the same audio in two tracks or something. Pretty hard right. So I'm gonna come from behind. Okay. Got one. I'm gonna pursue the e leader. Okay. Focusing pretty hard right. So I'm gonna come from behind. Good flank. Let's call this. Again, you got a brush right here. One. Look at this fucking E-leader. What's he going to do? He's an E-leader next to two front lines. Call it. Get this guy. I'm gonna pursue the e hey, yo, go shoot him. Like, here. I'm going to go after him. Okay, like, help me. Let's kill this guy. Like, call for the team. Don't just tell people what you're doing. You want to communicate so the team has an objective. You know what you're doing already. You want to say if, like, someone should help you or not. There's one right here. It's the dualies. I got one. Done. Big storm Rainmaker coming in. Shield. Rainmaker's death no. Same for your ancient here. Like, I'm ancienting. Let's call it. There's good job on your reign of follow, though. Good job circling line. back for the landing. That's good coordination there. Nice. Out of ink. I was wondering. I was wondering why why drop roller didn't work, and then I realized I switched it out for uh, hostage oh. rotor. I was wondering why why drop roller didn't work, and then I realized. Out of these calls need work. These calls need work. Out of ink. I was wondering. Forget the drop roller. Who cares? Let's make calls here. Secondly. Junior here going in to help is good. I like it. I like that they're helping out with the front and not being too passive. That being said, they're doing too much. Paint for the front line, throw bombs, don't go far enough to where you're going to die. This is going a little bit too far. It's better than you sitting by the Rainmaker and doing nothing, but it's a little bit too much. You still want to preserve your life more than other Slayers. Permits out of ink. I was wondering... Also, wait, this just made me realize, who's holding the Rainmaker here? Okay. I was wondering why, why drop roller didn't work, and then I realized I switched it out for, uh... Yeah, th this call, I have no idea why this drop roller call is being, like, said right now. I was wondering why... Forget I... it. Uh, say it after. It's okay. Why drop roller didn't work, and then I realized I switched it out for, uh, hostage oh. Damn, I got killed okay. by the, uh...
Not a bad push, though. Like, the start of this was good. You rotated back and helped your team. Your pack set up on the left. You guys didn't waste a lot of time. You got good pain control. There's one behind me. Behind, behind, behind. Same thing, though. If there's one behind me, do you need help with it? Like, say it. Push forward. Okay. Sounds good. Permits out of ink. I was wondering... I was wondering why... why so, it was like, start of this push was good. It fell apart a little bit from some overextending, but the start here was good. Killed by the... The baller. Okay, this is just getting way too greedy. Okay. If you guys lose a push as a team fight, do not do this. This is basically staggering. It is one person going in when no one else is even back yet. And the reason this is so bad is because now, to get four players alive, the other three people who are already back have to wait, like, nine seconds, plus they lose 50% of their special meter. Staggering means that regrouping and getting specials ready takes significantly longer. Even if it's just one player that died, that's why it's so, so, so important not to stagger. Because staggering gives a huge advantage to the defending team. Deaths are very punishing in this game, and it's especially in this kind of situation. Alright, we need to regroup. They're gonna push far. No, they're going center. Off the bombs, watch out. Um, I go. Good bombs! No, no! Space bar! Thank you. Good bombs here. Really good bombs. Watch out. I like that. I go with two bombs. with a bomb. Uh, he's going around. Uh, yeah, right side. Head. Right side. Oh god. Okay. Nice. Good. Good coordination here. There's not much talk, but like you guys move together yeah, right side, here. Right side. Like your brush and junior pair, you flank behind. This is good coordination, especially considering no one's fucking saying anything. Oh god. Uh, Nice. That's pretty good. Now, if you guys communicate, you'll coordinate like that better and more often. Because that's really good. Being able to dive people like that as a trio. That's really good. I'm gonna preemptively go forward. You want that more often in these games. Uh, cool. Okay, I guess I'll grab Rainmaker then. Yeah. I got it, I got it, I got it. Like, there, there's a good call. Like, I'll grab the rain. Get it over with. There you go. Don't waste time. You make the call. Someone makes a decision. Things happen faster. I have my stamp. That's probably better. Uh, watch out for E-leader. Yeah. At least one. Fuck. Okay. I am not quite sure yeah, why we are forcing this left side. I have my stamp. That's probably better. Uh, watch out for E-leader. Yeah. Like, we're going a little bit too aggressively. You have three specials here. We don't need to force this. We can- you can play it with specials. We're trying to brute force just run in a bit too much. Fuck. Uh, uh, yeah. no. And honestly, you could just push top right. Okay, I guess I'll... Like, you could just bring it over this way. Because if you go all the way, like, the far right side, their team's not set up for that. And you can cross there and poke the E-leader out. Like, one player could go over there. You are the L3 and just pack them. Like, you guys could easily break the Rainmaker away here. Because you have the packs to push this right side. Like, normally that top right side's awkward to push, but you guys have double inkjet. Like, your comp can actually push that area pretty well. Okay, I guess I'll grab Rainmaker then. Yeah, Let's check it. I've got it, i got it, i got it. Okay. Let's jump have... Regardless, so, like, if we are going left, like, get your L3 up here. Like, have them circle around this area. Because what happens here is your L3, your shot, and your Octobrush all push from this one area. So their E-leader is going to shoot you from here. These guys are going to back up and shoot you from here. If you get, like, your L3 here, either flanking or inkjetting, they now have to look at two different directions, one of which is insanely awkward, and they get poked from two sides. If you're trying to push in from one area, you generally want to have multiple angles. Like, it really helps to just push from two different spots into the same area. Because it has much more for people to look at and split attention with. The clumped up you are, the easier it is for, like, an E-leader shot to get a kill. Or Octobrush Flick to do damage. It's way easier for them to get value on one person. That's probably better. Uh, watch out for E-leader. Yeah. At least one. Fuck. 
So you see, like, they don't have to turn anywhere. They can just look one direction and take care of all three Slayers. And the oh, Rainmaker. Uh, no. Oh, God. Fuck. Yeah, I'm about to wipe. Dude, Same thing picking E-Leader here. Are they? But you have to respect Chargers at times, and this is one of those times. Dude, that, that E-Leader is fucking nuts, man. I mean, it's the Carbon Roller that's causing me all the problems. Yeah. Rainmaker, at least. Dude, this man alive. Also, this is the exact same mistake as the first push, in which we're all dropping into hell and being very eager to fight them right in front of the E-Leader sight lines. E -leader is fucking nuts, man. You don't have to. You could just throw a bomb at the Rainmaker. You could just go from this right top right side and shoot him. Smarter fights here. You don't need to force us like that. I mean, it's the early. It's like, you go to bomb the E-Leader, you don't even need to bomb the E-Leader. Just fight on the right side where the e can't shoot you in the first place. Nuts, or stay up here and poke bombs behind the wall. I mean, it's the Carbon Roller that's causing- The leader will get- the leader's getting a lot of value because you guys are going in front of where his shots are. If you guys take fights in a way where the e leader can't hit anything, then you're taking 4v3s. The e leader has to move. And that's really hard on Albacore because this map is very good for Charger. There's a lot of places for it. But it can still be done. That right side is the main thing. The other thing is, like, no one's taking advantage of high ground up here. Like, someone just sitting up here pre-firing can control this entire area where the Rainmaker's gonna go, where flanks are gonna happen, can bomb it, and it's much, much safer. That, that e -leader is fucking nuts, man. Like, I know you guys have a lot of aggressive weapons, but that does not mean you cannot take advantage of high ground. You still have to do that whenever you can. You still want to try to take smart engagements, not just run at them. Me, it's the early, it's causing me all the problems. Rainmaker, at least. Dude, this man alive. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> that is false. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, they're pushing, they're pushing, they're pushing. Got him. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. The E leader's currently offline for a moment. Okay. Oh. That was behind Joe, a wall. Nine. Damn it. They have. The leader's currently offline for a moment. Okay. Oh. That was. Okay, so someone flanked in mid, that's okay. I guess, rainmaker? yeah, that works. What? He. he they auto rushed and popped. Thing. Fuck my shit. Do you want me to re do you want to reset it or do you want to just uh, yeah, let's reset? Oh, we have well, I died, so. oh, Yeah, same thing here. Don't grab it. Just let it go back. It's okay. Well, just I'm let it go back. It's it not now. worth grabbing it. Oh god, left side, left side, left side. What the I fuck? Okay, I got him, I got him. Uh, no, oh, I almost. Fuck. Not a lot of <laughs> Okay. There is a lot of communication and a lot of clumped behavior. There's a lot of positioning mistakes. There's definitely a lot to work on. And that's okay. Like, I'm guessing you guys are like... Uh, tell me a bit about your team. I'm curious. Like, how long have you guys played together? Like, is this your normal comp? Tell me a bit about yourselves. And I just realized I was dropping frames a ton. I'm so sorry. Hopefully that didn't skip around too much. Oh no, Spectrum, you bitch! Okay, I don't know if they're still here. Group of friends to play. Okay, so yeah, you're not you're not like super professional. You just play together a few villains. Okay, so like you guys feel like you're fairly new. So that's what I was gonna expect. I was expect like that kind of experience. So the main thing to keep in mind if you guys want to try to play better is your coordination and communication. Communication is very simple. There's three notes I'm going to give you. First, I, I want to cut out all that shit that is irrelevant to the game. The, oh, the drop roller stuff, or damn, the E-leader, or any of that shit. Just cut it out. Talk about it after the game whenever possible. It's unnecessary clogs comms. Secondly, for communication. Okay? What are you going for? Like... What's your goals? Do you want people to help with you? Like, what do you want to do? Call for teammates to go with you. Call where you want to go. Like, make it clear, not just what's happening. Your job in communication is not just to say where people are or what you're doing. Like, that is a very surface level comms. It is better than nothing. But ideally, communication is a way to make the team coordinate better, to get a team goal and to get everyone on the same page. 
And that means there has to be a response. It cannot just be four people saying what's going on. It has to be someone saying what to do, and then other people responding to that. Not just in what they say, but what they do. If you call to take care of that baller, then the junior needs to go and help that. They need to say, like, okay, I'm here, or whatever. For play, be careful staggering. When you guys are defending, you need to be safer. Play near cover, don't drop in as easily, poke more with bombs. On pushes, split up a bit more. You want to push from multiple angles. Inkjets will make that easier, but don't play super cramped together. You want to push from at least two different angles, and it'll help out a lot. Thirdly, you guys might want missiles if you're going to play this short range. Having a K-Shot will help a lot. It's something to displace long range. Or have someone playing a bit more mid-range weapons. If you guys can, like, flex around a little bit and figure out some different comps. That comp will be better in shorter maps, but not in longer. That's my main notes for this. Also, yeah, that's why, like, reaching out in the Splatoon community is important, because not a lot of people play this game, let alone competitively. So, you know, getting involved in, like, ser servers or Reddit or Discords, you know, finding a way to interact with people, like, you'll make friends because they share the same hobby with you. All of the people I'm friends with and play this game with, I met through Splatoon. It's hard to find people you normally talk with and interact with that also happen to play competitive Splatoon 2. Alright, though, my voice is a little dead, and Spectrum is apparently dying a little bit, so I'm sorry, uh, at Tapono, but I will have to do your VOD another time. I will just keep it in the queue. So, yeah. Um, that'll be about it. Uh... I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll try to do more of these sometimes, but I hope uh, this was able to help you guys. It'll be on my second channel if you want to look back at it. And, you know, I might do this again sometime. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go raid. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I hope this was helpful. Uh... I think Jay is still streaming with friends, so I'm gonna raid Jay Moji. Go say hi to him. But thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a good one. And uh, if you guys want, join my Discord server, and I'll do more of these sometime. Bye-bye, guys.